so the next the next topic is uh, <clears throat> looking at uh, how we can make operations on uh, columns. So with, uh, I mean, one of the very nice features of uh, data of the pandas data frame, and it's you know something that you also have in, I think that would be natural to you if you're using data frames in R, is that you can uh, very easily apply operations on all elements of uh, column. <clears throat> so here, we have a, an example in this first section where we will look at uh, arithmetic and uh, logical operations. So I loaded my data frame and uh, for instance, if I wanted to increase the age of every passenger by one year, I don't have to write a loop uh, to uh, loop over each element and add one to each element. I can simply take the column and say plus one and then um pandas automatically understand that what i want to do is to apply this operation to every item uh, every element of the age uh, column and so now the uh, age is increased by one so you can apply any sort of uh, mathematical uh, operator in this way so adding decreasing divided and so on here now I'm uh, subtracting one again. You can also use, uh, if you're familiar with this uh, Python uh, shortcuts, so minus equals one means, you know, take the element and remove one. So this also works with um, with data frames with and with columns of a data frame. So here this basically means subtract one from the H column. So now we are back to the values we had at the, uh, uh, at the beginning. Um, here we have um, another uh, example. So we can also, uh, you know, do operation uh, on multiple uh, columns. So here we have now a different uh, data set. Maybe I will just show it here. Oops, sorry. Okay, so this is a data set of uh, Swiss census made in 1880. And so it contains uh, the rows are uh, towns in Switzerland, and then the columns are different attributes of these uh, towns. So you have the town name, how many uh, inhabitants live in the town, you know, how many are Swiss, how many are uh, men, women, and uh, so on. So here I just uh, take a subset of the of this uh, data frame. I just take the total number of people in the town and the number of uh, men. And now let's say if I want to compute the fraction of men in each town, uh, I can very easily simply uh, take the columns of uh, male and divide it by the total. Okay, so if I do this, now uh, pandas understand that uh, I want to, for each row, I want to divide the value in the total column, uh, sorry, the value in the male column by the value in the total uh, column. And uh, now if I wanted, for instance, to add this information as a new column, then remember I can simply uh, use the square bracket syntax here to refer to a column that does not exist yet and assign it the value of the division of the male column by the total. And if I do this, and now, because this column does not exist yet, it's created by pandas, and I have a new column with uh, my values here. Um, right, so this we, we have, uh, also, already seen if we take a single column of a data frame, it returns a panda uh, series, and it's the same if I apply an operation on um, a column, then uh, what I get is a pandas series. So for instance, let's say if I take this, uh, I will take, so 
So now here I add two columns together. So the number of uh, uh, men and uh, women, so male and female uh, columns. And I want to check if it's equal to the total column. So for instance, let's uh, here, let's say I just want to, I receive this data set and I just, you know, do a very basic uh, like integrity check to see if the, uh, you know, if these three columns uh, uh, make sense, right? If the sum of men and women equals the total uh, people in the in the village, or if there was some maybe error introduced in the data set at, at some point. So here you see I can apply a mathematical operation, but I can also apply logical operations. And in fact, we already did this, you know, earlier when we created masks to filter through data frames. So here you see I got a panda series, and therefore I can also, you know, apply any um, a method of uh, a series to the output of, of such an operation. So for instance, here, if I wanted to count the number of um, uh, sorry, I, I, I want to count the number of true and false because this returns me a, a, a series of true and false values. And if I wanted to see uh, how many are true and how many are false, uh, can use uh, count values. So here I see that I have uh, two uh, rows, so two. Uh, rows in my data frame where I have a, apparently a problem. And then I could, uh, if I want to see exactly which rows uh, are making a problem, then I can simply use the, the output of this computation, which is true false as a mask. And then uh, as we did before, I can mask, I can filter my data frame through the mask. And now I can uh, easily find the two uh, lines rows of my data frame where the uh, where there is a problem between the the counts of uh, men and women and the total values okay and here you can notice that i use this tile in front of the mask so what this means is that it basically uh, inverts if you have a, a vector or a series of boolean values if you add the tile in front it will uh, basically invert the value so it changes uh, true into false and false into true. And here I use it to basically uh, take the, the rows for which the output is false instead of true. And yeah, okay, so you can also, um, we didn't explicitly see this uh, so far, but basically you can, um, what you can do is that when you do a selection, then you can also uh, perform an assignment on this selection. And what this means is that it, uh, um, it means that you assign this value only to the row that match the conditions that you, or the, the selection that you did. Okay, so here, let's say I want to, uh, put the fare of the passengers in third class to NA value for some reason. So I can simply uh, make a subset of the uh, passengers in the third class. And I say for the fare column, I will set values of NA. And now you see that uh, passenger values for passengers in the third class have been set to, uh, to NA. Okay, so let's take a few minutes to do a micro exercise uh, six. Uh, again, with the Titanic data set, uh, now we would like to do a query to, to get uh, uh, passengers that are younger than 10 years and apply a discount on their fare. So modify the value in the fare column, basically. So what I want to do is I want to uh, so divide uh, basically the the fare by two, but only for people who are under the age of ten, right? So 
Uh, the first thing is that we need to select these uh, rows somehow, and we we know how to do this <clears throat> with the lock uh, indexer. So we can say uh, we want to select uh, people, so columns, sorry, rows for which the column age is uh, smaller than 10, right? So if I do this, uh, I should now have <clears throat> only people whose age is uh, below 10. Okay, so that seems to work. Now, what I want to do is for these people, I will select the fair column. So now I have only one, um, one column here. I don't have my whole uh, data frame. And for, for this, this column now, I want to divide it by uh, by two, okay. So you can uh, you can say you can do it like this. Say okay, the column equals the column divided by two. <clears throat> but as we've seen, there is so this would work. But there is a shortcut to say sim to uh, say simply divide equal two. Okay, so this means um, uh, the column equals the column divided by two. So if I do this, and, and I look up, oh, sorry, actually, use this to get a few more kits. And now if I compare uh, before and after, I should see that for um, kids, so for instance, the third column here, I have now divided by two the fair, and same for the last two columns, I also have half of what I had before. And for all other passengers, the value is unchanged, okay? Because I only apply the division on this uh, subset of rows. All right, any, any questions? If it's not the case, then uh, let me continue. And we will now see uh, a couple of built-in functions that you can apply to uh, columns of a, a data frame or actually also entire uh, data frames. <clears throat> so you've seen before, I, I showed you, for instance, an example when we wanted to check the, uh, the fraction of uh, people who survived uh, with the fraction of in the Titanic data set, we, I, I showed you that you could use the dot mean method to compute the mean of an entire column. Well, there are many other of these functions that are available. And here we just uh, list uh, a few of them so that are useful. So you have count to count the number of non-NA values that you have in a, in a column or a series. Uh, then you can have things like sum mean, max mean, you know, that so would do exactly what you expect. So the, the operation indicated in the name, uh, std, dot std for standard deviation, dot var for computing the variance, round to round the number to a given decimal. And you have also uh, operations on Booleans, such as dot all to check if all values are true or dot any to check if any, uh, if the uh, series or the column contains at least one uh, true value. So all these, uh, these methods by default, they apply uh, on, um, on a column. And if you want to apply them on rows, then you have to add the axis equal to one argument, okay? so. Zero is the default value for the axis argument, which means apply the operation by column. And if you want to apply it by row, you change this to axis equals one. Uh, so let's see a couple of examples here. <clears throat> so the first one is I, I want to compute the mean and standard deviation of uh, age uh, in the in the my, in the Titanic data set. So I can simply select the column age, and then I apply the mean method on it, okay? So I get the answer here. 
And if I want to compute the standard deviation, then I simply apply the dot SCD method. So you can do this on one column, but you can also do it on an entire uh, data frame. So here it's a, a data frame with two columns, age and fair. And if I apply uh, one of these functions on it, you see that it will give me the value per column. If I wanted to compute them per row, uh, in this case, it wouldn't make much sense, but if I have a, some data frame in a, a data set in a, with a different uh, a setup or organization, then I can simply use axis equal one. And yeah, sometimes you, you don't necessarily want to get uh, to, um, uh, for instance, you don't want to, to get um, a value itself, but you want to get the index of the row with this value. So the typical example here is with uh, a minimum and maximum row. So let's say I have a, uh, I don't want, uh, I mean, this, in this use case, I want to find out, for instance, which uh, a passenger has paid the highest uh, ticket price in the in the data set, but I'm not interested only in the in the actual fare. So I I, I don't want to use just the max um, method, but I'm I want to retrieve the index of the row where the the fare is maximal. So I can display the entire row and I can retrieve other attribute of the passengers, uh, so the name, the class, and so on. <clears throat> so now what I can do. For this, I can use IDX max or IDX min. Okay, so in this case, I want to get the passengers who paid the most. So I would select the fair column and then use the uh, IDX max um, method. And this will return me the index uh, where the fair column is has its highest value. And then I use this the output of this to uh, filter my data frame. And you see now I retrieve the row of the person who paid the highest uh, ticket price. Um, all right, so here we've seen how we can apply these uh, some of these built-in functions uh, and they cover you know all the basics as we've seen like uh, mean, median, minimum, maximum, standard deviation, and so on. But sometimes, uh, you know, you want to apply a function that is a little bit more uh, specific and that you will write yourself. So in other words, you want to apply a custom function. And this is, uh, of course, uh, possible. And the way it works is that you have to use these <clears throat> uh, map and apply map methods. Okay. so. If you want to apply a function to only a, a series or so a single column of a data frame, you would use a map. And if you want to apply it to an entire uh, data frame, then you would use apply map. So here is uh, an example of how it would work. So first we need a, you know some sort of custom function. So that's what I'm defining here in this uh, into cell. So we create this function that we call silly function. And what it does, it simply takes um, uh, a numeric input, so uh, actually uh, integers, and it will simply check if the value is even or odd. Okay, And if it's even, it returns a string even. If it's odd, it returns a string odd. Here, I, I just test it. I apply it on numbers for, from zero to four. And you see, I get even when the number is even and odd when it's odd. <clears throat> so now uh, let's uh, say that I would like to apply this function to all elements of the age column in the data frame, Titanic data frame. Okay, so the way I would do this is um, I will select the column I want to apply the function on. So here's age, and then I will apply the map method of this function. And the argument that you pass to map is the 
uh, actual function you want to, to apply. Okay, so if I try this, you see that now uh, it has taken every element of the H column and it has checked if the age was even or odd. There are just a couple of things that you uh, that you need to be aware of here is uh, that uh, sorry the, the important thing is that uh, this function that you are passing to map it must accept uh, take exactly one um, input argument okay obviously because the column contains you know it's applied on each element of the of the column and each element is a single uh, value so it's logical that the function that you're passing to map must be a function that accepts exactly one uh, argument. Okay, if it's a function that needs two arguments, then it will not uh, not work. Now, in the case where I would like to apply this uh, function to an entire data frame, so here I create a data frame with the three uh, columns, age, fair, and uh, passenger class. Then I cannot use map. I need to use apply map, but uh, it works exactly the same the same way. You just call apply map, and then you pass the custom function you want to apply. And now you see that it's <clears throat> uh, the the function has been applied to every cell in the data frame. Okay, so I just map for a single column or a panda series and apply map for an entire data frame. Now, if you wanted to apply a custom function uh, actually to an entire column, but not, you know, not element-wise, but actually uh, that's a whole column is the input of your function, then you have to use the uh, dot apply uh, method. Okay, so it's the, it works the same way as a, as a map uh, method, but the difference is that now uh, you have to give a function that will uh, accept a sequence of values, and this sequence will be the content of the of the column. So here I have a, an example. I have this. I create a custom function called uh, sum. Oh, sorry, it should be sum of squares. And uh, what it does is it takes a sequence of values as input, and it will simply uh, compute the sum of the square values. So now, if I want to apply this uh, function to each of my uh, three columns of the data frame, then I will simply call apply, and I pass the function sum of squares. And actually, uh, here I'm passing uh, one more argument. So actually, I default should be zero. So I ah, no, sorry, this was five words. That's correct. Um, yeah, so here I pass the uh, function sum of squares to apply. And you see that now what I get uh, as output is basically the function applied to each of the columns. Okay, so that's the difference between uh, apply and uh, uh, the apply map is that apply map will apply the function to each uh, element of the data frame, whereas apply will apply it column wise. Okay, so obviously apply map takes a function that uh, takes a single. Uh, where each uh, that takes uh, only a single argument, whereas when you use apply, then the the input function must accept uh, an argument that is a sequence of uh, values. And if I wanted to uh, now apply this function instead of computing the sum of square per column, if I wanted to do per row, I would simply change axis to axis equals one. Okay, by default, uh, things are computed by on the entire columns. And if I wanted to compute them on rows, I have to manually add axis equals one. And now what I get is a 
So basically for each row, I get a, a, a square sum, I mean the sum of uh, the squared values of H, fare, and passenger class. So here we have a, a small uh, section. It's just to, to draw your attention on the fact that um, of course, you know, to compute these, uh, uh, for instance, to to apply a certain function on all the elements of a column, so or even on all elements of a data frame, you could also very well say, oh, you know, I, uh, I would just write a loop and, you know, go through my items one by one and then apply the function to each of them. Okay, but so this is possible. It will work, but the problem is that it will be very slow. So if the data frame is small, Maybe it doesn't matter, uh, but if the data frame is large, then you know it could really have a make a big uh, difference. So the idea here is that uh, whenever possible, you will want to do uh, what is called this you know vectorized operation. It means to apply a function on um, an entire uh, column or on the entire data frame uh, at once. Okay, so basically, what this means is that whenever possible. You really want to use a map apply or apply map functions, and you don't want to write loops. Okay, so basically you want to avoid for performance reasons, uh, and also to make your code uh, more concise. You really want to avoid loops as much as possible. And when you work with these data frames, you really have to get into the habit of uh, thinking into these uh, vectorized ways. So apply. Uh, functions and, uh, and methods on all elements of the column at once with, uh, you know, map or apply map. Okay, so that's that's the idea that we want to, uh, the message that we want to uh, give you here. I think for, if you do this type of analysis already in R, probably you're also familiar with this problem because, you know, R is even slower than Python and uh, the, uh, writing loops take for takes forever. So there you probably also use vectorized uh, functions. So in Python, uh, in pandas, it's the same. Whenever possible, use uh, map, apply or apply map to do computations on your tables. And yeah, don't don't use loops. All right, I think that's the uh, last. Maybe almost that micro exercise for this notebook. Where <clears throat> what we want to do is that uh, I give you here a function that will, um, sorry, if you remember in the, let me just show the PDF. So in the um, uh, Titanic data set, the last column embarked here, it contains. Um, uh, the abbreviated uh, value of the port of embarkation, so the city where people uh, boarded the Titanic. And it has, you know, S for Southampton, C for Cherbourg, and Q for Queenstown. And so what we want to do is we want to create a new column that contains the expanded value of, uh, of the port of embarkation. Okay, so here I give you a function that uh, when you pass it, the first letter of the, the abbreviated value of the of the port of application, it will expand it to the uh, full value. And what I want you to do here is to apply this function on every element of the embarked column and create a new column. So let's take five minutes to to do this, and then we will correct it together. Together, so. We've just seen that to, when we want to apply a custom function to a, a column of a data frame, what we want to do here, we can use the map method, okay? So this method is, uh, we need to apply it on a single column of the data frame. So, and the column we want to work on is embarked, right? So I can do pf dot oops, embarked dot map. And now I can give the function that I want to apply. 
Okay, so I will do it like that. And if I try to run it, now you see that I get back a, a column or a series that contains the expanded value. Okay, so for each element in the row, uh, Pandas applied the function and it uh, got the response from the function, which in this case simply expands the abbreviation, abbreviation of the city to the full name of the city. Now, if I want to store this in a new column of the data frame, then we know that's very easy to do because we simply um, use a square bracket uh, notation and we create a new column that we will call um, bar city. Okay, and we assign it the output of the map function. Now, if I look at my data set, I should have a new column exactly here with all the expanded values. And that's it. To <clears throat> with just this line, I can easily apply the function and create a new column in my data set. 